My favorite book says the greatest among you will be your servant. How many of you are serious about your goals and dreams? Raise your hands. Very good. Write this down. Provide more service than you get paid for. Provide more service than you get paid for. I go to a lot of seminars and workshops. And one of the things I know about T. Hobb Eckert, when I was sitting in the class with Robert Royal and all of the other presenters, they hold themselves to high standards and they provide more information than anybody else in the industry, bar none. They hold nothing back because their commitment is for your success. And when you hold yourself to high standards, write this down, impact drives income. That's why you're here. Because the training, the seminars, been making a difference in your life. If they did not have impact, two or three hundred people would be here, if that amount. Impact drives income. So I became the errand boy for the disc jockeys. I would go get their lunch and their dinner, and I would bring it to them in the control room, and I'd watch them working the control boards, knowing my time will come. Write this down. I expect to reach my goal. Yes, you want to operate with a spirit of expectation. I expect to reach my goal. So I started preparing for the next position. Never forget one quote that I heard. As you look at your life, look at your goals and dreams. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. If you expect to reach your goal, prepare yourself now. And so then pretty soon, the guys at the station, they begin to take a liking to me. Write this down. Build relationships. As you're aware, people deal with people that they know, like, and trust. And so they would say, Leslie, yes, sir. Come here, yes. Come outside. Who did this? Oh, your car? Yes. Who cleaned my car? I did, sir. I would wax their cars on the weekend, inside and out. How much do you charge? Oh, nothing, sir. I just wanted to help out. I was providing more service than I got paid for. I was building relationships. They said, whoa, look here. Donna Ross and the Supremes are coming to town. The Four Tops and the Temptations. Here, here are my car keys. Pick them up for me. Take them to the Fountain Blue Hotel on Miami Beach. I said, yes, sir. I would drive them all over Miami Beach in the big, long Cadillacs. I didn't have any driver's license, but I'll drive it like I had some. Then one day, it was a Saturday afternoon, a disc jockey by the name of Rockin' Roger was drinking while he was on the air. It was a Saturday afternoon, and I was the only one there. Rockin' Roger got so drunk, he could not complete the show. He started slurring his words. He's about to fall off the chair. And there I was, looking at him through the control room window, walking back and forth, young, ready, and hungry I was saying drink rock drink drink rock I'd have gone get him some more if he'd asked me to then pretty soon the phone rang it was the general manager and I answered the phone I said hello he said young boy this is Mr. Klein I said I know he said rock can't finish his program I said I know he said would you call one of the other DJs in I said yes sir I said to myself, he must be think I'm crazy. I called my mom and my girlfriend, Cassandra, said, y'all come out on the front porch and turn up the radio. I'm about to come on the air. I waited for about 20 minutes and I called him back. I said, Mr. Klein, I can't find nobody. He said, young boy, you're not worth the controls. I said, yes, sir. He said, go on there and segue the records, but don't say nothing here. I said, yes, sir. I couldn't wait to get old Rock out of the way. I put on a fast record. I said, look out, this is me, LB, Triple P. Les Brown, your platter playing papa. There were none before me and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and single and love to mingle, certified, bona fide, and doubly qualified to bring you satisfaction and a whole lot of action. Look out, baby, I'm your love man. I was hungry. I was hungry. Get old man a round of applause. I was hungry. I was hungry. You got to be hungry. Shake someone's hand on your right and left all around you and say, you got to be hungry. 
You got to be hungry to get those dreams out of your head and step into your greatness. You got to be hungry to get those ideas, that talent, that gift out of your system. You got to be hungry to get up off the canvas of life and understand what Willie Jolly meant that a setback is a setup for a comeback. You got to be hungry. People that are hungry are willing to do the things the day others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. How many of you got value out of what you've heard thus far? Well, raise your hands, please. Very good. I would like to leave this with you. I don't know what your goals are. I don't know what you want to do. Here's what I know about you. You have greatness within you. Here's what I know about you. I can help you to live full and to die empty. I can show you what I've learned. If anybody told me that I would be doing what I'm doing now, I leave here today, I go to New Orleans and speak there, then I'll be flown to Barcelona. If anybody told me, given my circumstances, born in an abandoned building on a floor, on a poor section of Miami, Florida, called Liberty City, of both my birth parents stood up and said, hello, son, I would not know either one. Being labeled educable, mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, failed again when I was in the eighth grade, no college training. Anybody told me the principles that I would teach you that they would have the impact that it has had on my life. This Les Brown that you see, I did not know he existed. And I tell you that you have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. Come into the room with me and I guarantee you, your life will never be the same again. I like to leave this with you. I don't know what your goals are. Mine is to find a cure to autism. Mine is to find a cure to breast cancer and to prostate cancer. Mine is, is to work with our youth and to reduce the recidivism rate in our prisons and help young people learn how to become an asset to our society rather than a liability. Mine is, is to train speakers to become great communicators, to speak from their heart, not their heads, and teach them how to impact and create a new conversation so people can see the possibilities of life and overcome the possibility blindness that held me hostage for 14 years. Years. I don't know what your goals are, but here's what I know about you, and I don't know you. You've got greatness within you. And I like to leave this with you, something my mother used to love to hear me say. Leslie, yes ma'am, mama, say that thing for me, boy, that makes me feel good. I dedicate this to you, to the greatness in you, and to the dream that you showed up on the planet to produce. It is simply this. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it. If all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity,